Taken from Romans chapter 8, verses 23 to 27. In verse 23, the Apostle Paul speaks about the redemption of the body. He says, And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our bodies. Believers are the first fruit of the Spirit, in that the Holy Spirit indwells all who adopted into the family of God, giving them the power to overcome sin. The believer um, understands in his heart the battle that is going on within and without. Within, he sees uh, himself um, that there is a, a force of the, called the flesh which he described as an opposing uh, 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 nature that he has to wrestle against. And, you know, if you are in a wrestling match and you have to be uh, watching out for your adversary day in, day out, week in, week out, without let up, without uh, any relief, reprieve, uh, you'll find that it is a very exacting spiritual posture. And yet, the Apostle Paul is saying to us that you are not struggling or you are not in that battle by yourself. That the Spirit of God that is within you uh, helps you. Right. In verse 27, he says that he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Of course, here the, the believer wrestle against sin. Living in the flesh, we realize how important it is that we would have victory. When we yield to temptation, there is a consequence, you see. Each time we say yes to sin, each time we yield ourselves, we pay a price. Albeit, it can be a heavy price that we pay. And therefore, the Apostle Paul tells us that the Lord is with us and that He will see us through the end of our journey. Uh, we hope, uh, the word hope there has the meaning of uh, waiting uh, with a good expectation of a good end. Uh, that the Lord is helping us, with us, able to make a way for us. And so the Lord is saying to us that we are to be encouraged right, that in our weariness, in our um, constant battle, in our wrestling against the flesh, um, the Lord grants to us the victory. Verse 23 says, And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption. What is the adoption that the Apostle Paul is speaking about? Well, he speaks about the glorification of the believer. A day will come, a time will come when we have to struggle no more when we would be, <clears throat> uh, we said that um, 
we have run our race. We have fought a good fight. We have finished the course. And the Lord uh, tells us that we are all on this race and that He would like that His people uh, would have victory. He would like that His people would overcome and would find victory in that, <clears throat> in that race, in that uh, um, process right, by which we grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, that you grow to be a person that is walking closer and closer with God. There is a sense of the holiness of God in your life, in your heart, and there is an increasing sense of it that you want to live a pure life. You want to live a life that, that is pleasing to God because you know that the other way, uh, it's you suffer. You pay a heavy price. And the consequence is not worth the going through. And so, before we arrive at verse 27, uh, verse 26 tells us, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit maketh intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. Well, the Lord says to us that indeed, the Lord knows right, that we are in that, that uh, state, uh, uh, living in a world that is cursed. Right? The world is cursed. Uh, verse 23 of our text, remember we studied last week. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Sin and its misery, sin and its suffering, uh, sin and its debaucheries. Uh, sin uh, brings about terrible consequences for mankind. For we know, Paul says, that the whole creation groaneth. In other words, it, it is trying to find a way out. Is there a way out? Well, the redemption that God gives us is the way out. Through the Spirit of God, He enables you to overcome sin in your life and to bear fruit in your life. And you need to know what is uh, sin and what is the will of God so that you may do the things that is pleasing in the sight of God. <coughs> and so the believers... <clears throat> A time will come when we would receive the redemption of our body. In other words, when the Lord redeemed our body, uh, we will be given a new glorified body, no more aches and pains, no more struggles right, with a physical infirmity. Right, uh, we uh, don't need to bear right, the pain of a, a physical injury. Right? When the Lord would rede re redeem our body. And a time will come, a time is coming, when we will be given a new and glorified body. And so this is our hope, this is our redemption. And this is what the Lord wants us to see, that there is a future to our suffering. You know, you can suffer, but there is no uh, end to it. No. The Lord tells us that this pain, this suffering in this world that we go through, 
will come to an end. In heaven, there is no pain, no suffering, no death. And heaven is such a wonderful place. And the Lord wants us to know that, you know, that's the place that we are going to. Is it so real to you? Is it such a reality for you? Well, Paul tells us that as when we, in our struggle, right, in our wrestling against sin, uh, find ourselves weary, find ourselves uh, tired, find ourselves strengthless, uh, if that's the word there, then you need to look at your, the hope of what God will do for you, the redemption of your body. So Jesus says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive un you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And so the believer has the hope, right? the hope of redemption. And we are saved by the hope, you know, because as you struggle against sin, right, and you fail, and you come to the Lord and say, Lord, please forgive me. Please be merciful to me. Give me the strength not to do this again. Help me to change. Help me to grow. Help me to mature. And you find in your weariness a hope. Because God will do something for you. Something external to your own effort. Because you are more or less, we said, at the end of our strength. And so the Lord tells us that if you would hope in the Lord, they who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength as the eagles, right? They shall run and not faint. Uh, they shall walk and not be weary. How so? Well, the spiritual strength comes from God. God endows you with the strength. The Spirit of God uh, gives you that strength whereby you overcome. So the Apostle Paul describes it as the Christian's hope. We are saved by hope to describe believers hanging on to the promises of God for their present sustenance and to guide them into an unknown future. You cling on to the promise of God. Jesus says, I go and prepare a place for you and I will come and receive you again. Well, today you may not think, you know, so um, powerfully of this statement. But if you have a family member who is sick and who is on the verge of eternity, uh, you'll find that, you know, these promises of God are so critical and real and important. Right? We were in the, hosp in, in the nursing home just a few hours ago because the nursing home called. And the message is that his blood pressure has dropped and the breath is becoming weaker. Would he be able to pull through the morning? That was last night. And so we prayed. Can we see him again? Night time cannot go, cannot see. But if he departs, then we'll be so sad because you would be alone when he would depart. And yet we couldn't see him. And so we prayed and the Lord sustained him. And so this morning, uh, late in the morning, uh, in the af early afternoon, we were able to say hello. And he was able to open his eyes and look at us and to provide us a 
a response. And we are comforted. We are comforted to know that, you know, we are not struggling alone in the sense that, you know, we are not... God is with us to help us. His very presence to, uh, who, to be with us. These things, these promises of God becomes real to us. Right? That our departed loved one or our departing loved one, we, sh- we are not going to... Uh, uh, they are not going to leave us permanently. Right? But when you go to heaven, they will be there to receive you. They will be there to meet you. And God wants us to cling on to these promises, to know that uh, this is true. And therefore, we have hope to cling on. Jesus Christ has promised eternal life to all who repent of their sins and receive Him as Lord and Saviour. And we we who live in anticipation of Christ's return, live in anticipation of the glory to come. When He comes, we shall be given an incorruptible body fit for life in heaven. Now, we may not think of it very much today, uh, but you realise that, wow, that life is wonderful, you know, right? The body that does not decay anymore. Uh, and, you know, you have that power to move, you have that power to transcend time, you have that power of a, a immortal body. Right? Now, you know, every few steps we take, we give another prayer to say, Lord, please protect me. I, I make sure that I can keep my steps. Why? Well, because there's so much danger along the road. If you are driving, if you are walking, if you are running, uh, you, you, you just don't know. Uh, and and you find that how frightening it is to to slip. But you know that the Lord protects us and we are vested right, with uh, uh, the truth right, that at the end there will be no loss for you. Happy, right? You see your loved one again, there will be no loss for you. In fact, there will be reward that the Lord would give And so the Lord wants us to live that kind of a life looking forward to heaven, looking forward to the reality of life with God. And then we'll be a very happy people. The earth's uh, stains will seem so pale because God giving us a heavenly perspective is able to help us to overcome. And we do the things that God wants us to do. The example of Noah building the ark. The Lord uh, told him that there will be a rain that is going to come that will flood the whole earth. No rain yet. We don't know what is rain. And God will use the mist from the ground to water, to water the earth. But the rain will come. And Noah was asked, to build the ark. And Noah was asked by God to tell the people, there will be a flood that is coming. It's going to rain and it's going to rain heavy. And you must get into the ark. So the Bible tells us by Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear. So the Lord says that He's going to judge the earth. This earth will disappear. Fire will engulf it. First judgment by water, second judgment by fire. And this fire is going to be so consuming that the only way 
out is up. And so the Lord says to us that we are to exercise faith, to do what God wants us to do now. He was moved with fear, warned of God as things not seen, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. So we are to tell the people around us that there is salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. And there will be an opportune moment that God will give you to put in the good word and the reality of heaven and hell to the people around you. And they would be, they would realize that it's real. Time of reckoning. And God put the fear in your heart. God moved them to think, is there a way out? Is there a way out? And you will be there to give a message. There is a way out in the Lord Jesus Christ. Only by Him you can enter Heaven's Gate. Heaven's Gate is close to you, outside of Jesus Christ. And it's a reality, a truth that is so... Uh, important. How long did Noah build the ark? More than a hundred years. How long have you praying? Have you been praying for your loved one? One year, two years, three years, four years, five years? Well, he prayed for a hundred years. More than a hundred years. God saved his family. His three sons, his three daughter-in-law, they all got into the ark. They understood the calamity that was coming. So if we have been praying for one year, two years, and we think that our prayers are not answered, are we going to stop praying? Well, we have to trust God that he would answer it according to his goodwill according to his according to his wisdom according to his wise decree for our good for our good in other words god won't do you harm you know he will answer your prayer to your good to your benefit to your well-being and so, do we give up because we don't see any results in our prayer? Well, that's what we speak about, isn't it? We speak about the various uh, v- spiritual values, right? Virtue, right? And knowledge and temperance. Right? And what else? Of patience. Would you continue to pray? Would you continue to pray? Right? We have a prayer meeting. Why is it so important? Because we know right, that there are so many needs. And unless we would pray we would feel the pulse of the church, the feel the pulse of the spirit. We are doing our own things. Very important. The pulse of the spirit, the pulse of the church. And it's never found in the coffee shop. No but on our knees, at the throne of grace, with the people of God, who mean business for God. And therefore, we cannot kid ourselves. If our party, our devotion is real, then there is a sacrifice, there is a commitment. 
there is a price. But there is also a value. And that is the commitment of God's will to the well-being of His church. What do you do? Well, the Lord says, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, God's peace will come to you. Right? You have a worry, but you have also a specific prayer concerning your worry. If you have committed it to the Lord, then what happens? The Lord says that His peace will come upon you. His peace, His peace means that you no longer struggle anymore, you know. You know that God will take care. How He takes care, you may not know, but you know that He will take care. The Spirit of God will give you that confidence, that assurance in your heart. That's the peace of God that passes all understanding. And therefore, we can hope. And therefore, we have strength right, to uh, trust God. We have strength to not give up. The Holy Spirit sustains us by His divine presence, helping us to overcome sin, the flesh, and the world. As the old saying goes, if you have the Holy Spirit on the inside, you can stand any kind of battle on the outside. The human spirit fails unless the Holy Spirit fills. If you are not filled with the Spirit of God, no wonder we are unable to do the will of God. And therefore, it's so important that we would spend time in the presence of God. We would spend time bathed right, in the Spirit of God, knowing the will of God. You know, and the Lord will give us strength for our daily task. Whatever that work that God gives us to do, God gives us the strength to do it. The psalmist says, Search me, O Lord, and help me to know my down-sitting and my uprising. You know me. You know my thoughts from a far off. Wherever I go, whatever I do, behind and before, you are there. You are my God. And I cannot seek to flee from your presence, but to live in your presence, you see. And is that such a difficult thing? That was difficult for Lucifer. Lucifer decided that he would not subsist under God. That was his downfall. But the Lord says to us that when we subsist with the Lord, guiding us, teaching us, helping us, is there any lack that we have? No lack. God provides. God takes care. And there is great relief. There's great unity. There's great uh, strength that God gives us. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts 
and see if there be any wicked way in me. Lead me in the way everlasting. May God help us. We realise how uh, infirm, weak we are in our own minds and help us, Lord, to renew our mind so that our mind will be uh, strengthened, strengthened to know the will of God and given the strength to do the will of God, to hope in God when we don't see anything. Right? When Noah built the ark, no rain yet. No rain yet. But a day will come when all this will become reality. When the eternity begins. When we take our last breath. Ah. May the Lord help us, strengthen us, bless us with His presence to cheer, to guide, to encourage. May the Lord help us. Let us pray. Father, we pray for thy mercy. Be with us to strengthen our hearts. Save us by thy hope. The hope of the glory to come. The hope of eternity. The hope of uh, being freed from the bondage of sin. No more harassment from sin. Father, strengthen thy people and grant us thy Holy Spirit to help us this new week to overcome that we may live uh, according to thy will for thy own honour and glory. Help us, Lord, Bless us with their presence. This I pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen.